What is up guys, this is Cash with Cash Out Cars, and this is a video that I wasn't really intending on doing. But I was trying to take out the trim around my shift boot and paint that so it matches the rest of my interior. And it broke and it looked pretty bad, so here's what I did to fix that, and here's how to make your trim look good. Let's get started. Here's the trim beforehand to give you an idea of what we're going to be cleaning up and repairing. As you can see, the surface is pretty bad in their holes where the old piece of trim clipped in. This video will show you how to fill in holes like this and resurface your trim. The first step is to remove the damaged trim or the trim that you want to resurface and repaint. For mine, this meant using a pry tool to unclip the trim from the base of the car. Next, I had to carefully unclip the trim from the plastic which the shift boot was attached to. Then I was able to slide the trim off and begin working on it. The first thing that I did was use a palm sander with some fine sandpaper to sand off the surface of the trim. This removed that ugly clear coat and smoothed out the surface. Keep sanding it down until the old surface is removed and until your trim is completely smooth. Also, don't forget to get the edges and all the surfaces that you're trying to refinish. While you're sanding, you could use an air gun to get that plastic dust off and to check your progress. Once that's all set, you could fill any scratches or holes in your trim. To do this, I used epoxy. Once I made sure that the epoxy was thoroughly mixed, I applied a generous amount into the holes in the trim. Then I used some packing tape to help shape the epoxy while it dried. Let it dry in a way so that the epoxy overfills what you're trying to fill so that way it could be sanded down. Once everything's all dry, you could go ahead and pull off all your tape. Then use your palm sander to begin shaping back the epoxy. While doing this, try to make sure that the epoxy matches the profile of the trim, leaving a perfectly smooth transition. Sand down all the surfaces until the piece has a seamless, smooth finish. If you want, you could do a little bit of extra shaping. To do this, use some fine sandpaper. I rounded the edges on my trim piece just a little bit. Once it's all shaped, it's time to clean up your piece for finishing. This means blowing off all the dust and using an alcohol prep pad to clean up the surface. This will ensure that there's no oil or grime which would lead to a bad finishing job. At this point, you could decide whether you want to wrap, paint, or plasti dip your trim. If you're painting or plasti dipping like I am, mask off the trim using masking tape and newspaper. This will ensure that no paint gets on any surface that you don't want it on. Then you could start painting or plasti dipping. To do this, make sure you get even coats which cover the surface completely. Also, make sure you don't go too heavy and get runs or drips. With my Plasti Dip, I did a bunch of coats to make sure that there was a bunch built up. This helped tie the transitions between the epoxy and the trim even more. On my last coat, I let the Plasti Dip be spattery to give my trim a textured finish. Here's what the Plasti Dip looked like before I let it dry. Once it dried, it smoothed out a lot, but it still had some nice texture. Once your painter Plasti Dip is all dry, you could unmask it, revealing your work. Then you could reinstall your trim in your car using the reverse process from whatever you did to take it out. Once your trim is reinstalled, your work is all done. Here's some before and after shots of my interior trim. Hopefully this helps you make your interior a little bit more awesome and fit your personal taste. If you enjoyed this video or if you found it helpful, don't forget to drop a like. Leave any comments if you have any questions or let me know what you think of the video. Also, don't forget to subscribe for more. As always, thank you for watching.